Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's RhinoCam 2016 webinar from Microsoft Corporation. My name is Anita Anand. I'm part of the Microsoft team here. I have here with me Uday, our support manager, who will be running the session. Also with us is Joe Anand, our product manager, who will be available for asking questions uh, during the session and after the session. Uh, we have a quick uh, agenda up there for you so you know what's going on. Uh, I'll be doing the introductions and quick overview by Uday, which will be the demo of our 2016 product. And then Joe will give you a quick review of what's, uh, what the new uh, features that have been added in RhinoCam 2016. And then, of course, a very in-depth uh, presentation of what RhinoCam 2016 has for you. At the end of the session, we will have a question and answer uh, a time where you can pose your questions either uh, via your chat window um, or your question window. Now, during the session, you could uh, use that chat window to pose your questions there. We'll try to get to them as we run the webinar. The last 10 minutes will be purely for questions, so please don't hesitate to uh, uh, make yourself felt there. Uh, the, record, uh, the webinar is being recorded and will be made available in a day or so. It, uh, We'll make sure we send you an email when the recording is up on our website. For our new visitors here, RhinoCam is our plugin that runs completely integrated with Rhino. It includes all the machining capabilities of our standalone CAM system, Visual CAD CAM. It just includes the plugin that's completely integrated into RhinoCam. Now, I'll let uh, Uday take over now for a quick uh, overview of RhinoCam 2016. Here you go, Uday. Thank you, Anita, for the introduction. Uh, hello, folks. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and thank you for joining us for the webinar today. Uh, we are really excited to uh, introduce RhinoCam 2016. Uh, with some great new features, uh, you know, in the 2016 version. For those of you who aren't familiar with our RhinoCam products, I would like to give you a quick overview. RhinoCam 2016 is fully integrated into Rhinoceros 5 and is available in both 64-bit and 32-bit platforms of Rhino. Uh, upon installing RhinoCam 2016, you'll find the RhinoCam 2016 menu right up at the top of your screen under Rhinoceros. And RhinoCam 2016 offers different modules. We have modules for milling, which offers two to five axis milling solutions. We have a two axis turning solution, nesting for uh, 2D geometries, and art module, which you can use for converting artwork into 3D relief and as well as raster vector operations. So in today's presentation, I'll be going over a quick overview of each of these modules. And we also have a module for FreeMill, which allows you to uh, generate three-axis finishing toolpaths and post-process them out to your CNC machine to uh, run it on your machine. Now, I'm going to select the RhinoCam 2016 menu and then select the mill. On selecting the mill module, you'll notice that there are two browser windows that appear in Rhinoceros. The browser over here on the left is called the Machining Operations Browser and has two main tabs, Program and Simulate tab. And the browser over on the right side is your Machining Objects browser, which gives you access to additional tools, machining regions, uh, machining features, for whole feature detection, and also knowledge bases. And we'll try to talk about some of the new features in 2016 as we go through the presentation today. Now, under the Mill module, you have uh, three different groups under the Program tab. You have the Machine, the Stock, and then the Machining Operations. Uh, RhinoCam mill module is offered in four different configurations. We have standard, which offers two three-axis milling, hole making, engraving, and v-carving. We have expert configuration, which also includes four-axis capabilities. We have the professional configuration, which includes advanced 3D milling, includes four-axis, uh, multi-sided machining with index machining four and five-axis and positional index 5-axis milling, and our premium configuration also offers simultaneous 5-axis milling. 
And each of these methods in 2, 3, 4, and 5 op axis offers a wide range of toolpath methods. As you can see, under the two axis methods, we have the three axis methods starting with roughing, re roughing, uh, finishing methods, uh, parallel, horizontal, constant 3D step offset, pocketing, profiling, pencil tracing, re machining, and also curve based machining methods. Now, the four axis offers both indexed and continuous methods. Uh, both wrap methods where you can use facing, pocketing, and profiling, as well as four axis finishing and roughing methods. And the simultaneous five axis methods are offered in the premium configuration. Now, without any further delay, I would like to go over, a, you know, give you an overview of some of the two and a half axis methods, and we'll go over the workflow of how this can be done in RhinoCAM. Now, the machining objects browser's visibility can be toggled by just selecting the toggle right next to the program tab. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in a part where we can go over some of the two axis methods that are offered in RhinoCAM. So upon loading a part in Rhino, or you can model a part as you start in Rhinoceros, you can generate two axis or two and a half axis toolpath by selecting, by using solid surface geometries, mesh geometries, or even with just 2D curves or 2D wireframe geometries. So for generating or programming two axis toolpath, you can work with these. Now, upon loading a part or designing a part in Rhino, you would work your way from left to right as you work through each of these groups. Typically, in the first setup, you would define your machine tool, select the type of machining process. For two and three axis, you would pick three axis. You have four and five axis methods as well. And then you would select your post processor. RhinoCam's list of posts includes posts for over 225 plus machines and controls, which covers a wide range of CNC machines that are out there. So you can select your post processor from the list, and then you establish your orientation. In the next step, you would define your stock geometry. And once the stock has been defined, you can preview the stock right up on your screen by toggling the visibility of the stock, and then establish your origin for machining, which should be a work zero. You could pick the location of your work zero. Now, before you establish the work zero, you may want to make sure that your stock is aligned to the part. You can use the align stock functionality in here to align it to have it aligned to the bottom and centered in X and Y. And then you can go through the process of establishing your work zero and programming your toolpaths. Now, in this particular example, I do have a handful of toolpaths programmed starting with a facing operation. So as you select each of these operations you have programmed, you can go ahead and edit each of these operations that are already programmed. And you can change all your cutting parameters, cutting conditions can be set right in here. And you'll notice that one of the new features in the 2016 version is we have a new look and feel, and all the graphics have been updated. Um, you know. So there's your operation dialog. You basically step through the tabs in here where you specify your drive geometry, so your control geometry, specify a tool, uh, you know, enter in your feeds and speeds, or you can load the feeds and speeds from the tool establish your clearance plane, and then specify your parameters for roughing, your cut levels, your entry and exit parameters, and any advanced cut parameters before you hit generate to create your toolpaths. Now, once you have your toolpaths created, you could uh, view the toolpaths. You can also look at the toolpaths and levels. And then finally, you would want to go into the simulate tab. You select the operation and then hit the play button to run a cut material simulation a verification. You have simulation controls in here to pause and then simulate to end to speed up the simulation. You could simulate through all of these operations in here. So as you can see, we have a facing operation, a pocket operation to clean up the pocket, and then we have a second pocketing operation to clean up uh, the in a remove material around the island in here, and then a final profile to finish it up. So once you have these operations programmed, you could go ahead and simulate them all. So just go over to the simulate tab, right click and select simulate until you can simulate workflow to program and then you can take a look at your estimated machining time right click and information will tell you how long it's going to take to mill this part and you can also generate a setup information sheet by selecting shop documentation which allows you to create a a report of the information about the tools the stock the part geometry all of this information is now available in the setup information sheet which can then be printed out and handed out to the machinist in the shop floor so he can prepare the necessary tools in the stock plank for milling the part. And finally, you'd want to do a post process. So right click on the operation and then pick post. And this basically allows you to specify a uh, you know file name and the destination folder where you'd like the post code to be saved. So this is a typical workflow of how you basically load in a part and program your toolpaths. 
And what we just looked at here was an overview of the two and a half axis toolpaths in RhinoCam. Next, I would like to give you a quick overview of uh, some of the very nice three axis methods that are offered in RhinoCam. RhinoCam offers a wide range of methods in three axis, starting with roughing, three axis roughing, which is also known as horizontal roughing, or also familiarly called as roughing in levels or Z-level roughing. And the roughing operation automatically analyzes the part and the stock geometry that you define to define the areas that needs to be roughed out based on the part and the stock and the tool geometry that you define. Now, once you have the roughing toolpaths program, you could go from a roughing to a pre-finishing or a finishing operation. So what you're looking at here is a parallel finishing operation. It's a three-axis parallel finishing, and the toolpaths have been generated or programmed using a ball mill. You have different types of tools that you could select for programming these operations. So when you bring up your tool definition dialog, you could choose from a variety of different tools. You can use like taper tools, bull nose cutters, or corner radius tools for three axis roughing and finishing operations. There are several different types of finishing operations. We have parallel finishing, finishing in levels known as horizontal finishing, uh, radial machining where you can specify an area uh, to you know, finish specific areas in a part by specifying drive containment regions for radial machining. And of course, we have advanced three axis methods like 3D offset pocketing, which is constant 3D uh, step over, maintains uniform step over. And we have methods for uh, you know, in a finishing cleanup operations like pencil tracing and remachining. Now, RhinoCam's three axis methods, as I pointed out, offers you a wide range of finishing, roughing, and finishing methods, starting with roughing, re-roughing operations, uh, finishing operations, uh, pencil tracing, re-machining, flats machining, steeps machining, uh, curve-based machining methods, curve projection machining, between two curve machining, a wide range of methods in here. Now, to learn more about these methods and to find out which configuration offers each of these methods, you can feel free to take a look at the feature list on our website, which will be able to provide you with a detailed description of the toolpath methods that are offered in each configuration. Now, once you have these toolpaths programmed, you can go over to the Simulate tab and run a verification of these cuts in here. So you also have control to speed up the simulation and hit the pause and then hit Simulate to end. That would basically run through the entire simulation process. So there's your simulation after the roughing process, and then you can go ahead and run a simulation of the finishing process as well. So there's your parallel finishing toolpath, which is being run as a pre-finishing operation. And you can always hit the pause and then select simulate to end if you wish to run through a simulation or simulate it all the way to end. Now the next thing we're going to take a look at is uh, the features that are offered in our four axis methods in RhinoCAM. So I'm going to go over to uh, an example which can demonstrate some of the four axis toolpaths. Uh, the four axis toolpaths are offered both as indexed and four axis continuous machining. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with indexed four axis machining, is a index is basically a positional four axis where you can rotate your uh, rotary table to a you know a specific orientation and lock the rotational axis at that orientation and program two and three axis toolpaths. So basically, the table, uh, the part is turned on the table to a specific uh, orientation. It could be 90 degrees or any angle, depending on the features that you'd like to program on the part. And then you'd program a two or a three axis operation. So these are known as indexed machining. So in this particular example that you're looking at here, I have two roughing operations, one programmed from the top. And then I have a rotate table operation set up which basically turns the table over by 180 degrees, so I would be able to mill the features on the, the bottom half of the part. So the part basically gets turned on your rotary table by 180 degrees, and you can rough it out from the other side. And you can also program a combination of both indexed and continuous operations. So here we have a continuous finishing operation that's programmed after the two roughing operations. And you can take a look at all of the different four axis methods that are offered to you. Uh, these are offered in the expert and professional configurations of our mill module. So I'm going to run a quick simulation of the roughing process in here. So I'm going to pick simulate it to end. 
and you can see that the simulation is just completed with the roughing for the top half. We'll flip the part or the, turn the table over by 180 degrees and there's your simulation from the bottom. And now I'm going to run a quick simulation of the finishing cut as you see right in here. There's your four axis continuous finishing operation. So in four axis applications, you can define your rotational axis either along X or along the Y axis. I'm going to hit pause to pause the simulation so you can take a look at the uh, areas that are being finished and then we haven't uh, simulated, completed the simulation so you're still seeing the rough stock on some of these areas. So this basically gives you a quick overview of the four axis methods. Next I would like to point out our five axis methods that are offered in RhinoCam. The five axis methods, uh, the simultaneous five axis methods are in you know, offered in the premium configuration. Uh, the positional or index five axis methods are available starting with the pro configuration of our product. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with index five axis, index five axis is positional five axis where you can lock your uh, tool axis or the coordinate systems to specific orientation or planes that you can define in Rhino and then you can lock the tool axis to that orientation and program two and three axis toolpath. Now this is similar to your rotate table in four axis, however in the five axis setup so you can basically lock it to any orientation or any plane and then program toolpaths. And I do have an example of that which I'll be able to demonstrate after I go over the simultaneous five axis part. Now here we have a part that has a, a negative draft on the inside of this uh, cavity in here. So I would like to go over and program it using a five axis uh, method. So the first step is we want to rough it out. So we want to remove as much as uh, in the stock material as possible. So I'm going to run a simulation of our roughing toolpath in here and there it is. And now I have a five axis simultaneous method called SWARF machining that's programmed on this part which basically uses the side of the cutter as it follows the geometry. And you can see that there are different types of five axis methods we offer in RhinoCam starting with a curve projection machining, flow curve, between two curves, drive curve machining, surface normal machining, and swarf machining. So I'm going to go over some of the um, options in these methods. You can see that the dialogs and the interface for programming five axes is as simple as you could program it in three axes. So you, you define your wall surfaces, you, you can specify your flow curve, specify your tool, specify your feeds and speeds parameters, your cutting conditions, and your gout check parameters, and then hit generate to process your toolpath. Now let's go take a look at the simulation of our five axis uh, swarf machining operation. And there it is. So let me zoom out a little bit in here. I can see the tool axis control that you have on the five axis toolpaths. So I'm going to go ahead and hit pause to pause the simulation. Now also I would like to give you a quick overview of an index five axis example which is basically programming using uh, setups uh, which is basically defined under a setup and the coordinate system setup. This allows you to orient your coordinate system to different planes so that you can program two and three axis operations. And in this particular example we have a setup that basically programs the features from the top you can mill these pockets and drill operations and then you can orient your coordinate system to the front face or the right face of the part and program it from additional orientations as you see it right in this dialog in here. And you can go back and run a simulation and post-processing the toolpaths will automatically output your uh, primary and the secondary rotation axis angles uh, to compute those five axis motions. So this basically gives you an overview of our mill module Next, I would like to turn the attention over to our uh, RhinoCam's turn module which offers two axis uh, toolpath methods for turning applications. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, load in this part which basically gives you an overview of the different types of turning methods that are offered in RhinoCam. Now, in order to be able to switch from the mill interface over to the turn interface, you can either click on RhinoCam up on the menu bar and then select turn or you can use the toggle in here from the machining browser to toggle between the mill and then the turn modules. So once you have the turn module active you can 
notice that you'll notice that the system automatically orients your turn coordinate system so your world x axis is oriented to your turn z axis and the world y axis is oriented along the turn x axis so you basically uh, import your part or you can even work with just 2d geometries wireframe geometries or curves in rhino or you can bring in solid surface or mesh geometries to program your turn toolpaths so you basically define your machine, select your post processor, and then you define your part for turning. So you could be either selecting surfaces or solids or meshes to define your part, or you could select just uh, curves, and RhinoCam will be able to automatically define the your part profile. Once you have your part profile defined, you can define your stock geometry. This could be a cylinder, or it could be uh, defining a part offset stock, or you could even do a stock from selection where you can import your own stock and define it as a stock geometry. And once you have the stock defined, you would want to align the stock and then establish your work zero. Work zero is basically establishing where you want to set your XYZ origin, or this could be your work coordinate offset origin, which could be a G54 or a G55, which is typically what's used on most machine tools. And then RhinoCam's turn module offers you uh, you know, several different types of turning operations, starting with turn roughing, turn finishing, groove roughing, groove finishing, follow curve, threading, and parting off. The turn roughing and finishing operations can be programmed for features for outer diameter, you know, front face, and also inner diameter. And these depends on the tool orientation that you specify and the insert orientation. So you have the options for defining your tools where you can specify the orientation for the tool and then save these tools in addition to saving the feeds and speeds with the tool into your library. So there is your turn roughing operation. We have a turn finishing, and then we have a drill operation program to bore the hole on the ID on this part. And then we have some turn roughing and finishing for the ID features. Now let's go ahead and run a simulation of this. So I'm going to go over and define my stock. I can view the stock in a three-quarter view, so it basically gives you a better view of being able to view the stock from, the, for, you know, for simulating the ID features on it. And I can select the operation and then hit play, and this basically gives you a simulation of all of these operations we were just programmed. So very similar to our milling module, the turn module offers you uh, you know, cut material simulation, you can view the estimated machining times, you can generate shop documentations, you can archive all of the operations that you program into a knowledge base, so which can be applied on other operations. I will be spending more time, uh, you know, later during the webinar to go over all the new features that are offered uh, in, in the, uh, you know, mill and turn module, so we'll talk about the knowledge base features in depth at that time. Now let's turn our attention over to our next module, which is going to be the uh, art module, and then we'll take a look at our nest module as well, the nesting module. So uh, in order to um, load the art module, you could switch the interface from the turn to the art module by just selecting RhinoCam up on the menu bar, and then click on art. So this automatically displays the art browser, the art browser has two main tabs. You have the relief operations, and then you have the raster to vector operations. Under the relief operations, you could create a relief, uh, uh, you know, by taking an image and turning into a relief. You can also select vector geometries to create a 3D relief. So there are different types of operations that are offered in here. You can also convert native geometries from Rhino into a relief, and you can save these relief operations, what you create, into a shape library in here. Now just to give you a quick overview, you could define your project. Project is like defining your workspace or a canvas where you want to generate your relief. So you can specify a size or you can pick two corners to define an extent of your relief. And you can also enter in these numbers or you can snap to the grid in Rhino, specify the length and the width, and also specify a resolution. So once you define these um, parameters, your project is now defined and it's visible right up on the viewport. Now, I'm going to show you an example where you can generate 3D relief by selecting an image file. We could load bitmap, JPEG, or GIF files, and I can uh, select one of these images in here. So let's say, for example, I want to grab this image of a dragon. I'm going to select that, and this basically displays your relief operations dialog where you can pick the operation type, and there's your original image and the grayscale. Since I would like to add 
the relief on top of this uh, project setup. I chose the operation type as add. You have other Boolean operations like subtract, unite, high, low, and intersect, high, and low. So depending on the type of operation that you're trying to create, you can choose these accordingly. And you also have the option to um, invert the images if you need to, specify all the parameters for the relief, and you can specify a relief height and a smoothing factor, and then selecting generate creates your relief. And there's your relief right there. And you could now also go ahead and add some additional geometries in Rhino. If you want to create some vectors, you can use those vectors to basically uh, you know, puff or sweep those vectors using the puff and set volumes in here. And of course, we also offer a tool for creating raster geometries to vector geometries in here. I'm going to go ahead and give you an example of a raster to vector. So I'll grab a logo of the Harley-Davidson motorcycle. And there is your um, original image, and there's the black and white image. You can use these controls in here for the threshold to basically uh, set the threshold parameters in here to how fine or how you know, the threshold that you want to use. Once you define the threshold parameters, you could go into the vector edits to define your size, resolution, and you can uh, apply some noise filters, and then picking generate will automatically convert them to a vector geometry. And once you have these reliefs and vectors, raster to vector operation performed, you can select export to Rhino, which basically converts these as just curves in Rhino, and you could modify these curves if you need to, or you can go directly from uh, you know, to CAM programming, generate toolpaths with your mill module. You can do engraving, v-carving. You can also generate 3D relief operations from the relief operations tab. So there's a bunch of variety of different applications that you can use the art module for. Now I'm going to bring in a project that was already created in Rhino Art, so you can take a look at how uh, you can generate relief operations. So while I'm trying to load this file in here, folks, if you do have any questions, feel free to post those questions in the chat uh, window of your screen, and we'll be more than happy to uh, get those questions answered for you. So I have this project loaded in here, and I'm going to just regenerate the project. So you'll notice that we have uh, you know, relief operations using selecting a curve and performing a sweep operation. So it's basically sweeping the curve. Uh, you know, to generate a relief, and you have options to specify the parameters in here, and we have puff operations and also relief operations. So there's your project defined, and there's the relief. Now, once you export the relief, you can go ahead and you know, you know apply this wrap to surfaces in Rhino, and it's ready for machining. These are basically created as mesh geometries. Now, finally, I would like to give you a quick overview of our nesting module in RhinoCam that's offered to you in RhinoCam. And to be able to load the nesting module, you would basically go up to RhinoCam on the menu and then select Nest. You'll notice that the Nest interface automatically switches from the art or whatever browser you had active to the nesting interface. And the nesting module is a wizard-driven interface. You actually step through each of these tabs in the wizard to create your nest. Now let's take a look at some of the options in here. And I'm going to bring in an example of the nesting module. So our nesting module offers both true shape and rectangular nesting. Now here is a result of the nesting process with the true shape. You basically can select your sheets could be either rectangular or it could be even remnants uh, left over from a previous process. So your parts, the sheets to nest could be remnants. And once you define or select your sheets, you go to the next tab where you define your parts to be nested, so you can select parts. Once you have these parts selected to be nested, you can allow parts instead of the parts. So in the, inside this large cutout, you can have smaller parts to be fit in, so you can improve the sheet utilization for nesting smaller parts inside these cutouts in here. So there are several different options that are offered in the nesting, and we'll try to go through an example um, later during the webinar while we try to show some of the new features in nesting. So once you have the nesting process complete, you can execute the nest, preview the nest, and finally commit the nest. And each of these nested sheets can be output uh, as separate in separate layers, or you can have them all on the same layer and either have them stacked on top of each other, or you can lay them out uh, side by side along the X or along the Y, depending on how you want the sheets and the parts to be nested. So we offer both true shape and uh, rectangular 
nesting in um, our RhinoCam's nest module. Now with this uh, overview, I would like to uh, uh, you know, uh, turn this back over to my manager, Joe, who would be able to uh, talk to you about um, you know, what's uh, coming up in RhinoCam 2016. Joe? Hello, everyone. So, sorry about that. Um, uh, David, if you can switch back to the uh, presentation, that'll be good. Um, yeah, so uh, the way we structured this uh, presentation is uh, we the first half we wanted to give out an overview of the RhinoCam product itself for people who are not familiar with it. And the second half, uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, what's new. So if you switch over to the slide now, uh, they it's just the top five. Okay, so for people who have been uh, familiar with uh, RhinoCam 2015 or the older versions of our products, these are the uh, top five enhancements in 2016. Uh, the biggest thing that we are introducing in 2016 is software licensing. No more dongles. Uh, so this has been a, a big request. Uh, Uday, back to the Okay, uh, a big request from a lot of people, and uh, so we finally uh, bit the bullet here and implemented software licensing. Uh, the licensing process will be very similar to the uh, dongle licensing uh, that we had before, uh, but uh, it's a little bit more automated um, now, and there's uh, also additional uh, automation coming down the road where you can actually, um, you know, directly get a license code from us through the website. So these are some of the things that we have planned for the future. But starting uh, with the release of the 2016, you're going to see some changes in the software, in the licensing dialogues. Uh, very limited, uh, very easy changes. Uh, and so we're introducing both node lock licensing, which means that license will be locked to your node or one machine, which you can transfer to other, uh, other machines if you want. And then we're also introducing um, you know, network-based licensing as well. Uh, and the next uh, big enhancement, which again, as a lot of people have asked us this, uh, we're introducing advanced our advanced simulation engine into all of our configurations. Uh, for people who have used our standard configuration of RhinoCam, uh, we had a different version of the uh, simulation engine uh, integrated as opposed to the other configurations, the other advanced configurations. So not only have we uh, now removed that uh, a restriction on the standard configuration. We've also improved uh, the simulation module, as you can see in the slide that they just brought up. Uh, on the right side here is the 2015 Voxel model. This is the only uh, model, module or model, uh, stock mod model that you got with RhinoCam 2015. On the lower left, uh, uh, left-hand corner is the improved 2016 Voxel. And as you can see, um, the speeds, you'll see in a minute, uh, the speed differences between the 2015 and the 2016. And then on the right side, we have the advanced polygonal model, which is already uh, completed. Uh, so it's about seven, seven seconds there. Uh, it's finished, uh, finished that simulation mo mo model, uh, completed the simulation. And here on the left side, lower left side, the 2016 Voxel model, is, uh, took about 17 seconds to do that. And then while the, and the older 2015 is still computing, at, uh, it's about 35 seconds. Uh, so a lot of our users have asked this, and we think it's a, uh, it's a very tremendous improvement to the standard configuration of the product. So, OK, moving on. Uh, as you can see, it's still computing. So let's move on, how they, to the next, to the slide, back to the slide. Uh, OK, and the other uh, big improvement we've done, number three, uh, Model, use of 3D stock model in 2.5 axis machining. Uh, before, in 2.5 axis machining, when I say before, I mean all the older versions of RhinoCam, uh, you had to actually select the outer boundary or the stock boundary uh, for 2.5 axis machining. And now you're able to actually use the 3D stock model as the extents of your stock boundary. So you don't have to select an external boundary to define your stock. Uh, and this is especially useful when you're when you're in the pro configuration where you have a, a stock model actually you have a model stock rather than just a simple box or cylinder 
uh, it makes a lot of sense and it's a pretty a pretty good enhancement. And then um, on top of that, on uh, number four, uh, a lot of enhancements have gone into three-axis machining. Uh, so some of the things I can note are some of the things that Uday will be showing. Are we Joe? have worked on the Joe? Can yeah. I interrupt just a second? Uh, could you turn your volume down just a wee bit? I hear there's an echo from your end. Thank you. Is that better? Yes. Is that better? That's much okay. better. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, as far as the uh, three-axis machining improvements, uh, we have done. Um, you know, horizontal roughing has been you know, improved quite a bit. We've added spiral and radial cut patterns in the horizontal roughing methods, which were only available uh, before in the uh, two and a half axis roughing methods. Now they've been integrated into the horizontal roughing methods as well. Uh, we've also included corner cleanup in horizontal roughing, uh, which were again, uh, these things were only available in the 20, uh, I'm sorry, in the two and a half axis machining in 2015. Uh, some of the interesting things, uh, other interesting things we've added are cutting top and in, in parallel finishing. Before when you uh, did parallel finishing, uh, the cutter would actually ride the sides of the model. Uh, so if you had a steep model, the cutter was actually going to ride on the sides of the model. And now we have an option where you can uh, stop the cutter from uh, going down the sides. And uh, they will be showing you that. And then we also had an option to cap holes in parallel finishing and three-axis machining. Uh, so sometimes you might have a part that has a lot of uh, holes uh, that uh, you know that need to be machined using drilling. But when you are actually machining that part using parallel finishing, you don't want a, uh, the cutter to go down the holes. So we have an automatic way of uh, you know capping those holes. And then a few other uh, arc fitting has been integrated into all of our uh, three-axis milling methods now automatically. Even in the standard configuration, you will be getting arc fitting. Uh, horizontal finishing, uh, advanced machining has been enhanced to optimize retracts. Uh, now the retracts, we've eliminated about 90% of the retracts in horizontal finishing. So quite a bit of enhancements in the three-axis machining uh, area. And then the other thing we have focused on, uh, number five, moving on to number five now, is uh, we have really focused on advanced, uh, you know, automation in our product. And we, you will be seeing a lot of these as as we move forward into our, our newer releases, you know, upcoming in the, in the coming years. Uh, but what we have done here in number five is we have actually improved the way knowledge bases work. Uh, and um, before knowledge bases, if you're familiar with knowledge bases, you could only store parameters, cutting parameters in knowledge bases. Now what we have done um, in the 2016 release is we have defined rules in the knowledge base for geometry selection. So you can actually save a knowledge base with, with certain rules and then uh, load that knowledge base in a new part part file and it will automatically suck in the geometry based on the rules you have defined. And this allows you to use knowledge bases in very powerful ways that were not possible and can implement automation on your shop floor uh, to machine uh, families of parts. And, um, and that uh, change in the knowledge bases will go hand in hand with another, um, another enhancement that I haven't added here. It's for cabinet makers. We've added a new method called Explode Cabinet Designs. Uh, they will be actually showing you a little bit more of that. And, um, so those are the uh, the, uh, the top five, what I call top five uh, enhancements, and we have a whole host of other enhancements. We have worked on some of the older methods and enhanced them, uh, made them more robust. For instance, recarving has been uh, enhanced quite a bit. Also in four axes, we have uh, we have worked on the R level roughing uh, to enhance that and speed that up. So all in all, it's a very exciting, very robust release uh, that we are very happy about. So, without any further ado, I'll give it back to Uday for him to show all the different uh, options that we just uh, talked about. Uday? Thank you, Joe, for the um, explanation and description of each of the enhancements for uh, the 2016 release of uh, RhinoCan. So, without any further delay, I'm really excited to show you all of these new features and feel free to uh, drop in any questions that you have in the chat window and we'll try to get them answered for you folks. 
Okay, so first let's take a look at uh, some of the enhancements in the two and a half axis and three axis methods in the 2016 version of RhinoCAM. So I'm going to go into the milling module and let me go ahead and uh, bring in a file where we can talk about the automatic roughing technique in two axis methods. Now I have a part that's already modeled in here and I also have defined the stock geometry in, uh, you know, for this particular part to be milled from. Now in the previous versions of RhinoCam, we had to go ahead and create additional geometries like either a curve or a sketch geometry that defines the extents of the stock. Now with the 2016 version, we've added a new method called two axis and roughing. Now with this method, the system automatically accounts for the, the stock that's been defined in here and under part regions, what I need to define is just the part boundary. So I can click on select curves as edge regions. I can either select surface edges or if you have curves that are already modeled on the part, you can select those and then press enter or right click. In this particular case, I'm only interested in facing around the exterior of the part. Now I could also have selected the inside pocket in here so it will automatically know the topology of the geometry in addition to the stock extents to define the tool paths. Now once you have defined your part extents, you can select your tool for it. So I'm going to use a three-quarter end mill, set my feeds and speeds. One of the things you can notice in the 2016 version is we've added the option to override the coolant parameters from your tool geometry. So for example, if you had the coolant uh, type set in your tool definition and if you want to turn off or not uh, or turn on the coolant or change the coolant type from one to the other, you can override it in the operation level in here. That's also one of the new enhancements that went into 2016 and you can also notice the newer graphics in here for each of these dialogues. So there is your clearance definition. We can go ahead and specify the cut parameters and you'll notice that we have it set to automatically select facing cut patterns based on the core regions. And once you define all your parameters in here, your cut levels can be set and then selecting generate, it automatically computes the tool path based off your stock extents and the part drive region that you just defined in here. So there's your tool path for the automatic two axis roughing operation. I'm running a simulation of the automatic roughing operation that was just programmed. And let's select pause and then hit simulate to end. And there it is. Now if you also like to pocket the inside hole, inside feature on this part, you can edit the roughing operation and add the inside pocket boundary also to your drive region and generating the tool path, the system automatically knows that it needs to basically do a uh, you know, facing on the outside and then a pocket routine on the inside. And in addition to that, you can use the clear flats, which will basically be also able to face the top of the uh, part geometry to the blank right there. And there's your you know, facing tool path right there, which cleans up the flats. And you have all of the exterior features and the interiors programmed in one operations. Now, if you had to program the same thing with the 2015 version, you would have probably had to create three different operations, one for the facing of the top, and facing of the exterior and a pocket operation for the interior features. Now all these is basically, you know, right in one operation using a two axis roughing. So there's a very nice productivity enhancements which saves you programming time so you can focus on, you know, uh, you know, getting more parts uh, done in a in a fairly quick amount of time. So this is one of the, you know, one of the several enhancements that went into the two axis methods. The next thing I would like to point out here is of a powerful uh, two-axis uh, high-speed pocketing methods. High-speed pocketing has been uh, revamped for the 2016 release to handle a large number of uh, cases, test cases in here, and it's very robust and you know works well on a large number of cases in here. So I'm going to showcase a two-axis remachining, uh, sorry, two-axis high-speed pocketing method in a 2016 RhinoCam. So you can go up to the two-axis methods and select high-speed pocketing. Now these methods are offered in all configurations of our mill modules. I'm going to pick these two pockets. I can either select the face edges as drive geometries, or if you have curves, you can select those, specify a tool, you could specify your cutting conditions in here, and then in the cut levels, you can go ahead and specify your depth. You can either determine the depth uh, by selecting a, feature in a, a snap to a point on the top edge and near the floor of the pocket, 
or you can measure the depth or you can enter the depth parameters in here. We can do multiple depths per pet. And if you'd also like to do a cleanup pass, you can select the cleanup option in here and then pick generate. The high speed pocketing is a very powerful toolpath method. The toolpath starts with a spiral pass and then creates constant tangential arcs, which basically results in constant cutter engagement and prolongs so, uh, for folks, those of you who do a, a lot of metal work, you know, high speed pocketing is something you may be looking for. And this is one of the very nice toolpath methods as compared to our traditional pocketing method, which is also offered in our two axis methods. There also have been several improvements to the traditional pocketing method in two axis, which I'll be able to demonstrate on this particular pocket feature in here. So I'm going to go over to two axis and select pocketing. And I will basically select the pocket on the center of this part in here and define our cutting conditions, specify the tool, specify your parameters. You'll now notice that with the two axis pocketing, we've added corner cleanup loops. Now these loops can be set to be on the inside or you can do outside loops. And you also have options to add a cleanup pass in here. So let's go ahead and specify the depth as a quarter of an inch and then select generate. And there's your traditional pocketing toolpath with the inside corner cleanup loops. Now these can also be used for, you know, uh, for cleaning up pockets uh, in two and a half feet. And the cleanup loops have also been added for the three axis roughing methods as well. So I'm going to switch from the inside cleanup loop pass to the outside loop pass and generate it. And you'll see that the loops are now being generated on the outside. So the transition when you move from in a change in direction is much smoother with these corner cleanup loops. Now these are just some of the few enhancements that went into the two axis methods. And one of the nice things I would also like to uh, showcase here is in two axis profiling operations, we now added the option to specify an overlap distance in your entry and exit. We've had a lot of our users ask for this feature and uh, it's made it to the 2016 release in here. So I'm going to generate a two axis profile operation. Again, I can either select uh, face edges, curves, or even flat area features as the drive geometry. Specify your tool, specify your cutting parameters. Now, in this particular geometry, I'm going to use the direction to be determined using 3D model. And I'm going to pick climb cutting in here for the cut direction. So RhinoCam will automatically be able to determine which side to place the cutter based on the, you know, the solid geometry that you have modeled in Rhino. And then we'll go ahead and specify the cut depths in here. So I'm going to put in a depth of a half an inch and specify the number of passes right in here. You can go to your entry and exit, specify the type of entry and exit motion. So you can do a 2D entry, and this could be either linear or radial. The same thing can be applied to exit motions, or your entry could even be an along path entry. Now right in here, you have an option to specify an overlap distance. So I'm going to specify this overlap distance to be a half an inch. And I'm going to select apply entry and exit for each cut level and then pick generate. And there you'll notice that your overlap distance is applied on your entry and exit for each of those cut levels. So this is one of the uh, you know, new features that's been added to the 2016 version in profile operations. And also we have the option to do bridges and tabs. The bridges and tabs can be set automatic, or you can create manual bridge points to specify those bridges and tabs. And with the 2016 version, you have the option either to do triangular, which is ramp bridges, or you can do the rectangular bridges. So you can pick between uh, either triangular or rectangular to create bridges and tabs uh, for hold downs uh, in two axis profiling operation. So this basically gives you an overview of some of the nice features that are in the two axis, uh, you know, profiling, pocketing, uh, high speed pocketing in the two axis roughing methods. Uh, one of the features I would like to point out in uh, RhinoCam 2016 is the whole feature detection methods. Now, this feature was also available in uh, 2015. It's been enhanced for 2016. Uh, folks, those of you who aren't familiar with this method, this is a very great method to automatically detect whole features and machine them and you can set up a whole feature detection. Uh, you can set up knowledge base, and you can apply these operations and parts that are similar, which have the exact same or same whole cross section on it. In order to be able to program using the whole feature detection, I'm going to go over to the machining objects browser and use this tab called features. 
And in the Features tab, we have filters where you can specify what type of poll features to be detected. You can exclude certain type of polls, or you can use the filter range for diameter and depth. In this particular case, I would like to identify all the features in here. So I'm going to use Detect Poll Features and pick the face on this part. And you'll now notice that the whole features automatically detected six identical features in here, and those are the six instances of the feature. Now, to be able to program a toolpath in here, I can select uh, Create Whole Feature Machining Operation, and this automatically shows you the type of operations that can be programmed, and there's your cross-section of the whole, and you can choose what type of operations that you'd like to use. So, for example, you may want to do a spot drill, so I can do a center drill, and then do a deep drill operation, and then finally, I want to do a pocket for the counter board in here. I can use a whole pocketing operation. Now, once you have these three operations defined in here, you can assign and set the depths right in the operation in here. You can pick those depths and the operation. You can set it for the whole, each of these operations, the whole pocketing as well. So I'm going to change the depths. And once I have this created, I'm going to select Create Whole Feature Mob Set. You will now notice that the operation set is now defined in here. And then if you need to change or you know modify your tools, you can just select a tool in here and drag and drop the tool from the machining uh, objects browser under the Tools tab down to the Operations browser on top of the machining operation in here. So once you have everything set in here, you can right click and generate the toolpaths. Now your toolpaths have been generated for the features that are identified. And this feature, along with the whole cross section, can now be saved to a knowledge base. You can select Save and save it to a knowledge base. And you specify it to be saved in the um, RhinoCam's uh, you know, whole feature detection folder in here which is basically under your program data or the app data. And you save it in the whole feature machining knowledge base folder. Now, how can we apply these whole features on a similar part? So I'm going to go ahead and load in a part which has the exact same whole feature, but the part could be of a different size or different shape. So the whole cross sections are going to be exactly the same. So you load in a part. You go ahead and identify or detect the whole features. Now, once you have these features detected, we have an option which says select matching knowledge base and create whole feature machining operation. So when you select this, RhinoCam will automatically go and look for a matching knowledge base in the whole feature folder. And if it finds a match, it automatically creates the toolpath. You can see that you have the same center drill operation, deep drill, and the whole pocketing operation. And so with just one click of a button, you can, you'll be able to generate this. Now the next thing I would like to showcase here is our the cabinet design, uh, you know, how to explode a cabinet design and generate, uh, you know, curve geometries for creating toolpaths. So I'm going to load in this part into Rhino. And this is basically the cabinet could have been modeled in Rhino or it could be imported from a different system in here. So basically what I have is a fully designed cabinet. And the next thing I'm going to go over here is go under the utilities and then we have a new feature called Explode Cabinet Design. So I'm going to select the Explode Cabinet Design, and this automatically displays the dialog in here, which basically gives you options. You can explode all visible geometries. Exploding means it will basically convert them into flat panels and lay them out uh, the way you would like it. You can have these components placed along a row, along the column. You can use these parameters to choose, and also specify a spacing between them. Or you can just do export selected, or you can only explode geometries that are on certain layers. In this particular case, I'm going to use explode all visible, and I can create both 3D geometry and curves, and I can either place them on the same layer or the parent layer which they are in, or add them to a new layer. Now, when you pick OK, this automatically explodes, and you can see that it lays them out into flat panels. And since I chose them to be as uh, you know along X, it basically laid them out, uh, you know along the x-axis right there. And you can see that any component that could not be exploded are being left over here. So these are basically the accessories that go on top of your panel. So you may want, not want to explode those. You can basically get rid of it. Now you have these panels as both curves and meshes. So if you want to nest these and you just need the curves, you can basically do some processing in here. You can basically just hide the meshes or you know, you can be, you know, you select the meshes and you can hide them or place them into a new layer, and there you'll see all your curves. Now, these curves are can be prepared for nesting process. So what I've done here is I've 
basically eliminated some of these curves, processed them by you know projecting down to the uh, construction plane in Rhino. So I have prepped the model in here, and I'm going to go ahead and load the model which I already prepped up, so I can show you the nesting process taking these cabinets that are being exploded. So here, what we have is basically the exactly the same curves that were exploded from the explode cabinet design feature, and there's all your parts. And I've also drawn a sheet, which is basically a four by eight sheet. So typically, that's what's used uh, for most applications, or it depends on the size of the work envelope of your CNC router or the machine that can process it. So I have these two defined in here, and I'm going to go over to the nest module. Now, typically for uh, cabinet work or rectangular panels, it's commonly uh, used to use rectangular nesting patterns. I'm going to use rectangular nesting, select the parts to be nested. So I'm going to use select curves and just grab the sheet right there, specify the sheet count or sheet quantity. So I could, I'm could. i not sure how many sheets would be required. So I'm just going to leave it at one, go to select parts to nest. And now I can say select curves. And I can just go window out all of these curve geometries in here and press enter. Now you'll notice that the system will automatically identify them as parent and child. And as you can see, all of the features that are inside uh, the uh, exterior are considered as one part. So if you want to go back and just select a handful of them, you can go back and do a remove all. You can window select all of it or just you know, a few of them. And you'll notice them right there. They appear on the parts list. There's all your parts and there's all the you know, interior, which could be your cutouts or dados or whatever features they are. They're all treated as one part. In the next step, you can specify your nesting parameters in here. You can specify the distance between each part, uh, the distance from the edge of the sheet to the part. And you can specify if you like to tag those parts. You can use tag nested curves. And here you can have the option either to have the sheets laid out along x, along y, or you can have them stacked. Now, when you click estimate number of sheets, it tells you how many sheets would be required to nest all of those parts. It says two sheets are required. So I can go back and update my sheet count in here to two and go back and perform the execute nest, preview the nest, and there's your nested results. There you go. There's sheet one and sheet two. And then when you hit commit nest, it automatically creates these on separate layers since I chose create a separate layer for each nested sheet. Now once you have these nested, you can generate tool paths to program these sheets. So this is a new feature that's been added into the uh, mill module where you can explode a cabinet design. And then from the nesting module, you can nest them into a sheet, which is now ready for a CAM programming. The next thing I would like to uh, showcase here is our brand new feature, which is assigning rules to knowledge bases, which can help you in your automation process. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and start out with a new file. And as you can see on this particular part, I have a part which has several different features that needs to be cut. So I'm going to go over to the mill module, and then I'll go into our knowledge bases tab, and I'm going to load in a knowledge base of machining operations in here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this knowledge base, which basically has four different operations that were programmed on another part. So I have an engraving, I have hole profiling, and then I need to profile the larger holes, and then I cut out the exterior shapes. Now as I expand these operations, version, we have now the ability to define rules or selection rules. Now, if the rules haven't been defined, you will see that the uh, icon in here is flagged in red. So you can double click on it to set up rules for the knowledge bases. And these rules can be saved with the knowledge base. So for the engraving operation, I would like to be able to engrave all the points. And in addition to the points, I would like to also engrave all geometries that are on the layer called engrave. So I'm going to select these two. So I'm going to assign a rule. And once the rule is assigned, it basically turns the uh, you know to green. And you can see that the rule has already been set for engraving. So if you double click on it to edit, you'll see that the rules have been already set. And it's been set to the layer called engrave on it. In the next step, I want to set the rules for the profiling operation. So here I'm going to use the geometry type as I want to profile all arcs and circles and specify a range for the diameter. I could say, in a, in a profile, all of the geometry that are up to one inch in diameter, apply the rules for each of these operations. We can either apply by geometry types, geometry properties. You can use the filters in here for the diameter range. Or you can even do selection by layers. So you can do a combination of these. I'm going to go ahead and now, for the outside cutouts, I'm going to apply the layer called cutouts in here. Now, once I have these rules applied, 
I can save off these rules into a knowledge base. I can just hit save to knowledge base and I can say I want to save these to a knowledge base in here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save to save them to a knowledge base. Now once I have it saved, I will drag this into this machining browser and when you select each of these operations, you'll notice that the corresponding regions have automatically been assigned based on the rules. You can see that the whole profiling has automatically selected these holes that are up to an inch in diameter. The profiling for the inside automatically selects the holes that are between one to two and a half inches in diameter. And the outside profile automatically has these outside cutouts selected in here. So once you assign these rules... Jay, you can... okay, I want to interrupt here. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say, you know, for people who have used our knowledge bases before, this is a big enhancement. Uh, what we have actually done, what you're seeing here is the assigning of geometry uh, using rules and knowledge bases. We, we were never, never been able to do that before. And this kind of opens up a whole new uh, area of automation for you. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that everybody uh, watching today understands that. Thanks, Thank Uday. you, Joe. Thank you. So once we have these rules assigned, uh, in this particular case, I want to make sure that you know it's um, you know it's basically uh, mapping them to the geometries here, and you can right click and regenerate. You'll notice that the toolpaths are being generated based on the parameters that you already had. Plus, it's taking into account the rules that you set. So the machining geometries or the control drive geometries have automatically been selected. So there's no manual you know, selection of the drive geometry required in here. So you have these program on this particular part. Now let's say you have a family of parts that you'd like to apply the same rules and program them. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring in a part which has several of these features in here. I'm going to go ahead and bring this part in and as you can see there are several features on this particular part. So I would like to apply the same rules, uh, you know, bring in a knowledge base and program it. So I'm going to click on load knowledge base in here and then pick the knowledge base I had just saved with the rules on it and I said open. Now as the knowledge base is loaded you'll still notice that as you select each of these operations it automatically has those drive geometries selected so when you double click on it you'll see those drive geometries have automatically been selected so you don't have to go and manually select them since it is loading them or selecting the geometries based on the rules that you specified. So you have the geometries for your whole profile, the different operations in here and all you got to do is right click and regenerate and there's your toolpath. Now there's a little bit of preparation required in here so you just need to make sure that you map them either to layer names or you can have them by geometry types so you can use uh, either scripting in Rhino or plugins like Grasshopper in Rhino to basically generate these part profiles in Rhino and then once you have established your rules in Rhino Cam with just a button click you'll be able to program these toolpaths. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another example in here. I'm going to go ahead and bring in another part and you can see that you know we have different types of features that needs to be programmed. We'll go ahead and load in the knowledge base in here. Select the knowledge base to load. Right click and then regenerate and all your operations have been generated with the rules that were defined. So you don't have to go and explicitly select geometries because the rules automatically will select those geometries based on what is defined in those rules. So this is a very nice powerful feature that's offered in the 2016 version of RhinoCam, which is part of the knowledge base automation feature. Now I would like to uh, take a few more moments and show you some of the uh, three axis enhancements that are being added to uh, RhinoCam. And uh, I wouldn't be taking much of your time here, so I'll try to keep it short and make it quick. So uh, one of the enhancements that Joe talked about uh, uh, with the parallel finishing methods is in the parallel finishing operation we now have added the ability to cut top only or top and sides so when I pick top and sides you will now notice that it will automatically be also be able to program these sides uh, in addition to programming the top so this is one of the newer enhancements in 2016 version of Rhino Cam also. Uday, I want to interrupt. Um, I know Uday is kind of rushing it because uh, uh, we have only one hour uh, scheduled for the webinar, but we are going over the one hour limit, but that's okay. So I want Uday to take it a little bit easy and explain this. And I want to go back uh, one more step back to the knowledge base enhancements that, we, that he just showed. 
I want to make it very clear to users. Uh, I mean, for people who have used this knowledge base before, you're probably seeing a trend in the way we are working these knowledge bases. You know, we had the uh, the whole feature uh, detection before, and the use of knowledge bases to automate whole feature detection. And now, uh, with this 2016 release, we are introducing uh, a knowledge base automation with the rules for selection of geometry. So you can see a trend here that uh, we are really focusing on uh, automation using the tools that we have in our product. And you'll see more of this uh, in the coming coming release as we're looking at uh, you know, detection of features and things like that. Uh, so, so what we're looking, uh, what you can do with the 2016 product now is automate uh, you know, some of these processes that you might have in your shop floor with these knowledge bases. So, so, it's, a, so it's a very key point that uh, I, I want to reemphasize again. And I don't want to get uh, get that uh, lost in the uh, in the time crunch that we have. So sorry, with that, go I'll go back to that three axis now. Thanks. Not a problem. Thanks, Joe, for um, you know emphasizing on the knowledge base, uh, uh, folks. If you do have any questions or want to see how it might work for your uh, parts, you're more than welcome to uh, drop us an email, and we'll be happy to take a look at them and uh, answer those questions for you. So going back to the um, three-axis methods, um, some of the enhancements that went into the three-axis methods are in the roughing operation, as I pointed out earlier, uh, we've now added the cleanup uh, options, cleanup loops in the roughing. And also, as Joe pointed out earlier, we now also have the circular spiral and then also the radial options in here for the cut patterns. And with the parallel finishing operations, we have now introduced the option to uh, program top and sides are just tops only. So in this particular part, as you can notice here, we have the tops only program. So I'm going to go back and change this to program top and sides. And then select generate. And you'll now notice that the sides are also being programmed with the parallel finishing operation. Now the parallel finishing operation also offers arc fitting. So you can perform arc fitting, which wasn't available in as part of the parallel finishing dialog. You had to do it externally using the toolpath editor and was only available for folks who had the pro and the premium configurations. Now these are offered with the standard configuration. You can fit arcs to toolpaths in three axis parallel finishing and in horizontal finishing as well. Now the horizontal finishing operation has also uh, been uh, enhanced, especially in terms of the optimized machining, to uh, eliminate several of these retract motions that you're looking at in here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this operation before I regenerate it in the 2016 version. And you will notice that once the toolpaths have been regenerated, several of these retracts have been eliminated with the optimized XY machining option selected in the horizontal finishing for 2016. Now these are, um, you know, just some of the few enhancements that have gone into the 2016 version, and there have been several other features, improvements, performance improvements, and also, um, you know, features. Uh, so overall, the 2016 was a great uh, release with packed with new features. Now with this, I would like to ask Joe if he would have anything to add to uh, before I turn it over to Anita. Joe? Joe? Hello? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, pretty much wraps it today. Uh, I think uh, I've, I've gone over those uh, features also in my presentation. Uh, we will be uh, releasing this product pretty soon, and we'll have an extensive What's New document uh, that uh, will explain all of the other features and enhancements that the, we have added to this product. So we don't. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, we've already gone over. Uh, so. So let's ha let me hand it over to Anita now. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, everyone, for attending our webinar and sticking with us, even though we uh, uh, overshot our time limit here. Thanks, today. That was a great presentation. You packed in quite a bit of information in that uh, a little over an hour. Now, uh, folks, we will be recording. We have recorded this webinar and it will be available in a couple of days for you to uh, rewind and go back and look at it. 
And uh, I do realize that we have an enormous amount of uh, attendees, so we will be repeating this webinar in a couple of weeks. Uh, so if any of you want to re-attend this webinar, it will be available. We'll send you a quick email on that soon. Now, uh, 2016, as Joe mentioned, will be released in the next couple of weeks. We are uh, dropped at uh, drop that date is December 7th, so we, you should receive an email as soon as that announcement is made. We will be offering a discount for our early adopters, so stay tuned for that email. Uh, uh, discount is always something nice to hear about. Other than that, well, you can always call us, email us, Skype us, chat with us, and uh, uh, we'd be very happy to hear back from you especially about our enhancements in Rhino Camp 2016. With that, folks, I'm going to... Uh, Anita, hang on. I just yes. wanted to make one other note here. Uh, we, we had a small snafu today, and we apologize for, uh, for it, for people who might have been bounced out. Uh, GoToMeeting limit uh, was set to just 100. We had actually set it to 1,000. We were assuming it was set to 1,000. Uh, but we had a lot more registrants uh, come in today than we expected. Uh, so we apologize if you got bounced out and you had to sign back in. Uh, uh, again, we will be uh, recording. Like Anita said, we have recorded the webinar and we'll make that available. And we'll also uh, see whether we can redo this webinar uh, at a, you know, in another time pretty shortly before the release. So again, apologize for the inconvenience. Thank you. Thank you, folks, and you have a good rest of the day or the evening, wherever you are.